Good Monday morning. Start of a new week as we head into Memorial Day weekend where we will be at DJ's on Friday morning. It's going to be a fun, crazy, busy week for us here at WFAN. We don't want it any other way. And last night, Boomers Rangers got on the board in this series. You were thinking maybe they don't score a goal ever again. But with the way that they were playing, and I understand they weren't scoring, but the way that they were playing defensively and just the effort level, and as they like to say in hockey, the battle level in those first two games, you felt pretty good about the Rangers winning this game three. At least I did heading into the game. I don't know how you felt. And they did. They took care of business. And now you feel like, after thinking, man, you know, the Carolina Hurricanes have totally shut down the Rangers and you let one slip in game one. Now you're feeling, hell, we win this series. Let's go. Got the Yankees and Mets to get into a controversy with Josh Donaldson and Tim Anderson. The Mets beat the Rockies a couple times, and this is the first little rough patch that the Yankees have felt, if you want to call it that, uh, getting swept in that doubleheader by Chicago yesterday. Dan Snyder news. I mean, they're, this, today's jam-packed. Let's get it going. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? Yeah, good morning, G. You know, and the thing, uh, when we left on Friday, we were hoping that we were going to come in here this morning, and it wasn't going to be 3-0 yeah. because they had already been down 1-0. Uh, you know, but uh, as I was saying to you uh, before this uh, series started, you know, Carolina is very good defensively. Um, the Rangers played amazingly defensively on the road in Carolina. I mean, like, they played a very, very tight game. There weren't a lot of shots on goal by Carolina. What victimized the Rangers, like I was saying, going into the, the series, was going to be whether or not our power play was going to be able to generate enough goals against their very good PK, their penalty kill. And our situation down in Carolina was not good in that regard. As a matter of fact, we gave up a shorthanded goal. Uh, Igor played great in those games, and the defense in front of him played get great because he didn't really have all that many shots to have to save. And those games were really, really tight. Uh, this game opened a little bit more yesterday, but then again, we finally got a power play goal from Mika Zibanejad, and that has been you know, our calling card all year long. And we could sit here and talk about not scoring goals. They weren't scoring goals either, and they haven't been scoring goals either. Um, so it was a one nothing game uh, in game two that they ended up, uh, I mean, a nothing nothing game that they ended up giving up a shorthanded goal. Mm -hmm. and, in the, and in game one, they had a one nothing lead going into the third, and they ended up sitting back on it. And yesterday, the beginning of the third period, I said, oh, my God, here we go again. They're going to be sitting back on it. They kept just chipping it out of the zone, chipping it out of the zone. But then finally they started – you know, doing a little bit more. And then when I think about in in uh, in game one, we had the Capo Caco wide open goal that missed. Yeah. Uh, we also had, uh, you know, a Kreider miss yesterday at the open net. Uh, and then Mott finally gets the open yeah. net. I mean, a lot of things, look, the team is playing hard. It's playing physical. They're, 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 you know, but the thing about Carolina, when you're playing against them, they have a lot of tall guys. A lot, guys got a lot of long sticks. They're getting their sticks in the way of a lot of different things. And as long as you don't turn that puck over in the neutral zone and it goes forward, and you get to get uh, to keep them in their zone a few times. I, I would sit here and say that you know it's a uh, it's a very very even series at this point. I think Igor right now is the difference maker in these three games. He's been amazing, and yesterday he was even more amazing despite letting up the little softy under his left le uh, left arm, and it was a backhander, you know, by Niederreiter. But I think uh, you know this is exactly the way. I envisioned this series to be unfolding. I don't know if it's ever going to really truly open up, um, uh, but uh, if they can keep the shots to a minimum, although they did give up 44 shots yesterday. Yeah, I was going to say, yesterday that was not the case. Yeah, but that was Igor's game, Igor's yeah. game yesterday, mm -hmm. and it kind of got open a little bit, um, but you got to be you got to be careful. They, got, they have highly skilled players just like we do, and, and Rob Brendamore said it, and I agree with him 100%. It was kind of a, a, a much more fun game to watch yesterday than it was the previous two because the pr previous two are so tight. I mean, it's just so tight. So I feel good. You know, I feel good. I feel like my goalie's really seeing things and playing well. Um, I like the way our defense, for the most part, has been playing. And then when Mika scores the power play goal, I said, okay, this is our team. This is what we've done all year long. So our defensive aspect of our, our games have been really good. Our top lines and our Temi Panarin haven't done much. But, uh, you know, those are the guys that need to do more. There's no question about that. And, man, I mean, Kako and Heedle, those guys have had opportunity after opportunity. They just haven't been able to bury it. You know, Heedle got the one, but, uh, you know, Kako's had about two or three point-blank grade-A chances that 
he's either missed the net or, you know, Auntie Ranta has made a save. So hopefully sooner or later he's going to break through. And if he does, then that's the, the, the other side of the scoring aspect that you really want. You want your bottom two lines to be able to at least contribute something offensively. Yeah, and you mentioned how you feel like the series is even. I, I agree. This is not one of those, hey, the Rangers got a cute little win at home and now they're going to lose in five. That's not the sense that I have. I with don't the way that, that this, way. That, yeah, I mean, and sometimes that happens in series where you see one dominant team and, you know, maybe they steal a game in the series and it ends in five. I, I, don't, I don't have that feeling uh, about the Rangers. I, I, I think that this series very easily goes six or seven uh, at this point. And I don't believe that the Carolina Hurricanes are just going to come in and win game four and then go home and win game five with the way that it's unfolded. I mean, it's just amazing, too. I mean, we talk so much about about the postseason and the Stanley Cup playoffs and everything that happens. To, to go from what we saw in round one to the way the Rangers were playing to completely change that style of play to fit what the Carolina Hurricanes do and be so stout defensively when they were completely lost in that series against the Penguins... Uh, it's amazing, and I know that you know you you don't love the coach, but I do have to give him a little bit of credit um, in in adjusting not only in from series to series, but also games within this series. As you mentioned, I thought that they were going to go back to that classic prevent defense and try to try to sit on the lead. They didn't. I think that maybe was a conscious decision by him. They were not going to let this happen again. Let's get more aggressive. Let's go. Well, the players <clears throat> the players said that too after game two. And the other, the other thing I will say that that is apparent to me now is that uh, Gallant is somewhat a relaxing figure. Like he's, he, he, you don't see any kind of panic in his voice yeah. or what he says after the games in the post game, especially those first two games down in Carolina. He's like, Hey man, these were great games. These are tight. Dang, these are tight defensive games. Our, our team was playing, t- you know, defensive hockey. And I would agree with him that that was something that I didn't expect. I thought it was going to be running gun. But it's certainly when you have two of the best defensive teams and you don't even realize it in terms of goals given up. But I think the goals given up part of it, I mean, it's, it's really Igor Shesterkin for the Rangers. This is why he's up for the Vesna and the Hart Trophy both because he's been able to keep the Rangers and, and really kept them afloat early on in the season when he was unbelievable. But I think he's really been good the last four or five games that he has played. And these these games that he has played down in Carolina were great games. I mean – you know, you have you have a breakaway and a shorthanded goal, which you know guys Criders were lo- loafing on that. Um, uh, you know, and that's that's not his fault. I, there's not one goal. Maybe the only goal that's his fault was the one that he gave up yeah, yesterday. yesterday. Niederreiter. Yeah, that's the only goal. Everything else has either been an empty net goal or it's been an unbelievable tip pass, uh, a freak goal like the one off a Lindgren stick. And I have to say that you know, I, for the most part, he's lived up to everything that we've seen this season from a Rangers fan standpoint. And then when the two top lines do get involved, whether it be, it you know, feels by, like a different team. It, 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 well, that's, but that's what they need to do. But yeah. now I would say if I were a hurricane fan, I would say be, I would be saying the same thing about my team. I would be saying that, you know, my top players are not scoring. Mm-hmm. Now we can't win a face off for to the save life of your life. I mean, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. So we, we end now, right? up, especially if it's in our zone, we end up having to defend our zone a little bit more than we should have to. I mean, even if you were 50-50 on the, uh, on the face-off draws in your own zone, you'd like to think that you'd get at least 35 to 50% of those out of your zone. They're, they're having trouble with their forecheck. There's no question about it. But, you know, this is a team that has been resilient all year. I, I kind of felt like they were going to play well at home ice, and they need to do it again Tuesday night. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned how the calming influence of Gerard Gallant, well, you saw him really ticked off at the end of this game and saying stuff and being angry, and you really hadn't seen him like that. At least I hadn't seen him like that, at least throughout the playoffs. I don't know if he had a regular season moment where he was saying stuff like this was uh, bull crap. And well, we're you don't gonna... know who he was yelling he's at. He's yelling at Max Domi. Yeah, I'm going to well, get to no, yeah. he's also yelling at Tony D- D'Angelo, the former Ranger. He's screaming at him, too. Well, I mean, it was real. he really talked about those specifically about Max Domi and, the, and, the, and the, the, to cross-check on Lindgren once time expired in the third. But here's what Ryan Lindgren's got to realize. So Ryan Lindgren was just trying to let the clock play out. He wasn't trying to do anything. Yeah. He, you know, the game was over, and he was trying to be a good sport about it. Yeah. This is what Ryan Lingren just learned. You know, you can't take anything for granted. And this is part of – and Ryan's been great. Ryan's been a warrior. Ryan's been one of our tougher players, and he's the perfect complement 
uh, to Adam Fox and covers his ass so many different ways over. It's not even funny on the defensive zone when, when Adam's doing his offensive stuff. Uh, and for whatever reason, teams tend to go after him. Mm-hmm. Um, but he never backs down. The guy never backs down. And uh, whatever's bothering him, uh, you know, I wish he wouldn't do this at the end of the game because I don't want him to exacerbate whatever injury he's dealing with. Well, I mean, well, he really didn't. I mean, he but had I, to defend himself I, I after the cross check. I know. Right? And then there's Tony D'Angelo screaming, and then there's, you know, Max Domi screaming. And, and there's no question that what Max Domi did was cheap. There's no, yeah. there's no question about it. I mean, it, it does kind of run in, in the family a little bit. I'm sure, know. of course. I mean, he's got better hands than his dad yeah. did when it comes right. to scoring goals, but maybe not when it comes to fighting. Right. But, but it does it does run in the family a little bit. I understand it. That's that's what hockey is. That's what playoff hockey is. You try to send a message, and then the message uh, is either received or it's reacted to. And in this case, uh, for Ryan Lindgren, he's not going to back down from anybody. And, you know, this this is one of those guys like he and Braden Schneider. When Braden Schneider finally figures it out, he's he's not. He, they're taking some of the ice time away from him, but just because. There's a few struggles, but he is still hitting people, and he is going to be a really, really good, solid defensive defenseman. And he is going to be a physical present, much like I think he's like a young Truba. He's like a young McDonough. You know, he's a kid that you can see is going to be really, really solid. And, uh, you know, we're lucky to be able to have these young defensemen having all this experience now against these good teams and really standing up to them. That, that That's the best part of it all. They're standing up for themselves, and you, and you got to like that. You know, Keandre Miller had to do that in the previous series mm-hmm. with uh, Sidney Crosby. That's right. Yep. Sidney Crosby was going after him left and right. That's right. And he didn't back down. So, uh, I mean, that's what, that's what you love. That's what you absolutely love about your team and this team. And, and while people have all these different takes on what the Rangers are and who they are, the one thing I do know is that they've been resilient all year long, which is great. And, you know, again, now now we turn our attention to game four, which is a must win, given the fact that it's very difficult to beat Carolina at home. And the Rangers had two chances to beat them at home, and they unfortunately did not come through for whatever reason. But now that means you have to win game four in your building. Gerard Galland essentially threatened the Hurricanes and said that they were going to, you know, it's going to come back around to you now after this when he goes, I don't like it. At the end of the game, the game's over. We still got four games with these guys. We got the guy who can handle all their guys if we want to. We didn't like to do it, but Domi took a cheap shot at our defenseman. You got a long memory. You think about things. Like I say, the shoe might be on the other foot someday. Well, you got to remember the type of player that Gerard Gallant was. Yeah, yeah. He, he was one he of got these, activated, man. He, well, he was one of those guys that would, would get activated. He yeah. actually scored some goals, but he had, I think, four times the penalty minutes that he had goals. <laughs> yeah, so he knows. This yeah. was like the throwback moment for him, you know? All right, but I, I will say, you know, I'll, I'll back off a little bit on him because he did make a few changes early in yesterday's game, much like he did. Uh, you know, in, in the Pittsburgh st- uh, series where he had to mix and match a few teams, a guy, just to see if he can get him rolling and get him started. And then he went back to the original lines. But uh, I, I would say that the one thing that is evident to me with him right now is just his level of calmness, at least publicly, a- until yesterday at the end of the game. Oh, yeah. We which, saying- which is what we all want, by the way. Every single Ranger fan wants that from their coach at that yeah. moment. He was saying, shut the bleep up to Tony D'Angelo. It was clear as day caught by the camera. Right. So he, yeah. so he, that's the ex-player in him. Mm-hmm. That's who he was as an ex-player. Yeah. So I think that is what we want. We want to see that. You know, Tortorella would do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but then after the game. You know, he's, well, you know, it's kind of hockey. That's what we are. This is well, what our sport is. I mean, and I know he went after them a little bit more verbally, and I think he wants even more out of his team. That's mm-hmm. why. Right. All right, Boomer and Geo on the fan and CBS Sports Network. Jerry Recco is going to join us in just a couple of minutes. He is healthy enough and back. 